What is up, Moment family? Leica did something very special with the newly released SL2S. Now, even though this is a stills focused camera, it actually has some very powerful video high end specs. So, the question is can I get some cinematic quality out of this camera? Let's find out. In case you haven't watched it, I did make a short film with this camera, so make sure to watch that. But we will be talking about a lot of the scenes from that because that's the best way to test a camera. You put it in the environment where you're going to use it in, and that's what I did. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's just talk about Leica for a quick second. We all know Leica is a premium high-end brand and I've always, always wanted to have the opportunity to either make something with the camera or just be in association with it. And I got my hands on the SL2S and wow, this thing is built like a tank. It is hefty, it is thick. Um, the button layout, everything is just so high-end. It just feels premium. You, you feel it when you hold it. And I love this minimalistic approach to the design. Now, obviously, this is not new to the SL line. The original SL had the same design and the SL2 as well, the bigger megapixel camera of this version. This has 24 megapixels. Yeah, super, super minimal. The buttons, you know, everything doesn't have a label, only the play function and menu button. And of course, the on and off switch have a label on it. But I love the blacked out name of Leica, so it really doesn't stand out. This is a beautiful and well-built camera. So I'm not going to go over every little bit of specs in this camera. There's a hefty list. You can always check out the links on our website to see that. But the things that do matter to me is it has a high bit rate. So you can get 422 10-bit out of this camera at 400 megabits per second. And that's what should be expected when you're trying to bolster up. Bolster? When you're trying to put a video-focused system together you kind of want that as the standard you get that in sony you get that in panasonic black magic all these other cinema like cameras or hybrid cameras what have you they have that packed into this uh their systems and yes you can shoot 4k 60 at that high resolution too but you need an external monitor like the ninja v to record um, prores out of that um, internally you're dealing with um limited bit rate if you're going up to higher frame rates and this is only H.265. Now, H.265 works fine on my computer, especially at 4K. So I didn't really have a problem with any lag or anything like that. So that's good. But I would like to see internal ProRes in these cameras, but I'm asking for too much. So deep in love. Oh, yeah. Let's walk. With a wonderful girl. The loveliest girl. Uh, intro for yourself? <laughs> uh, sure. Well, um, I'm going to be kind of playing the role today. I'm actually a student full time. I go to Notre Dame and I'm getting my master's, but I love to act and model on the side. So I'm excited to yes. be here. So let me talk a little bit about the uh, experimental film. Uh, short film that I created with this camera. So I recently just finished uh, The Queen's Gambit. Yes, I'm late. I'm a late bloomer on a lot of shows, but man, I freaking love that show. Um, I love the pacing, I love the character development, uh, the cinematography, which is shot beautifully, the style, everything about it I deeply love. So after just binging all of that and I got this camera, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to try to recreate a few things that I saw. And so the story is just like, it's a, it compiles a lot of just different events, three or four events into like one short video. So in case you didn't watch The Queen's Gambit, it might be just really random to you. But if you watched it, you hopefully you'll uh, kind of pick up where I was drawing inspiration from. It's been very interesting using this camera. So far, I like the natural profile that's here, but I am shooting in the log, so I can have that flexibility. I don't know what's the claim dynamic range for this, but there are some areas where this is a very high contrast situation and the window's pre completely blown out. Just about any camera struggles with that if it's not like a red on Ari. But um, so far, the color and the skin tone looks really nice. And it's, I'm charging, I only got one battery right now. But um, I do have this, the 
the ninja here i'm not recording um to the external monitor because i'm not doing anything in 4k 60 just all 24p so yeah on location uh, i only brought one extra light just in case but i knew ahead of time when i was planning out what the light would look like and i was talking with the owner of the airbnb and i just asked him a few questions about like where's the sun position and stuff so i got a rough idea and when we got there man the light was perfect we had this huge bay window um if honestly if i had more time i would love to just gaff and grip and nd and all that stuff at atmosphere in the room but it was just my wife and i and maddie and so time was really against us and light was leaving fast so i was like look let's just really um stick to my rough outline of bullet points of what i had in mind for the story and for the shots let's just stick to that and then whatever else comes up as we're shooting we'll make sure to shoot that on top of whatever i have and that's how i like to just go about these things when i really have no idea uh, what to expect other than i knew what the location kind of looked like i just didn't know what the sizing was and i thought the size was kind of perfect so i can have depth all right so there's that background of the shoot. So when diving into the menus of this camera, it's pretty straightforward. I had to get used to pressing the menu button multiple times to get uh, deeper into the menu. So if you press it once and it shows you a quick menu and then you press it again and then goes into all of the menus. Some other features that this camera has, um, it has a five axis image stabilization. Um, it has the autofocus and we'll actually touch on the lens that I used, but the in-body stabilization is actually pretty decent. There's this one shot that I was tracking as she's walking into frame and um, I'm just slowly pushing forward. It tends to float a little bit. Um, it is difficult to try to handheld and trying to get a nice smooth push in, um, but I think the shot worked out pretty well. Uh, but I do want to move on to autofocus and the lens system. So. Basically, uh, I didn't use autofocus. Sony has spoiled me how good their autofocus is, and comparing this to that, it's nowhere near it. Uh, this hunts a lot. So uh, in terms of the lenses I'm using, this is the oh, beautiful lens for stills, absolutely. The uh, Sumicron 35 APO. Did I say that right? Sumicron. Yeah, Sumicron. Yeah. Yeah. And I had the 35 and the 75. Fantastic lenses. Very detailed. Very crisp. Um, uh, very clinical in a good way. It, 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 it's, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful lens. Uh, the downside of using these as a uh, cinema lens, uh, this is focused by wire and man, it has no feedback. It just keeps going and going and going. Um, there's no hard stops. Um, and as you're spinning this to rack focus, there's a lag because it's not catching. And it's, I just had all types of problems when trying to use this as a manual lens um, for this uh, camera and uh, it caused a little bit of headache. Oh, dude, one more time, that was good. I need to focus, wait, 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 go back. And what I had to do basically is just preset my focus. So I, if I knew where the start point and end point were. So basically what I did, I set, I set my focus ahead of time. So if I knew that's where she was gonna end, um, I just make sure I maintain that same distance and then she would perform the, the action and then boom, just land there, try to know focus. I did miss focus a couple times. Again, I will admit that, um, but I mean, it is what it is now. So when it comes to the autofocus, like I was mentioning before, there's like several modes. There's the IAF, I guess means intelligence AF, and then there's AF single, AF continuous, and then face detection. Um, I didn't want to use it because just a few tests that I were doing on location, it just kept hunting. And I don't trust autofocus that keeps hunting that can't lock on fo uh, lock on the target. So there's that. But using these two lenses in combination with the full frame, absolutely beautiful. Just beautiful results. Now rigging this was quite interesting. So I went ahead and rented out a wooden camera half unified cage. And that just allowed me to put the rails on it, even though I didn't use my follow focus in the end because there was no real feedback. I put gears on this thing and everything. But um, the unibody allowed me to mount my monitor um, in a different position so it could be a little more flexible with a magic arm. And it had the top handle and it was good. So I, And it gave me some extra weight, especially if I was doing handheld stuff. As you saw, there's some shots where I'm kind of following her and around. So that allowed me to use the handheld um, because it gave me a little bit more weight. I turned off image stabilization just for that because I didn't want that to interfere with some extra jitteriness. Um, but yeah, I just had it on a simple tripod and I was able to just go on and off pretty quickly. 
uh, with this system. And I liked having this uniformed unibody cage. I just w would like to have next time a case that just fits the bike entirely, but it worked for what I need to do. So let's just talk about the pros and cons and just my final thoughts on all of this. So this is a very well-built camera, like through and through it is solid. You are not going to wor be worried about it breaking. Um, that's a really good reinsurance and you're paying for that quality for sure. Um, two, I'm actually thoroughly surprised of the image quality out of this camera. Um, I do want to spend more time with it, but it is actually really nice to see this level of quality and understanding the Leica color science because I think that's a different look. You know, Blackmagic has a look, Sony has a look. So Leica is coming into this, Fuji has a look. So Leica is coming into this, say, hey, we have this look that we want to apply for filmmaking as well. And it's very pleasing. Another pro is the L mount. The L mount is actually a very versatile mount. Now I have a native mount here, a native lens for this, but if anything, I would have get an adapter to put on different lenses, put on my cinema lenses on this camera as well. So it's quite nice to have that option to be adaptable for a lot of different um, lens choice, EF, um, all those things. The battery life is somewhat in between. I, I'll put this on the on the lower end, but I did shoot this whole video on one battery for a couple hours straight with the mantra on and everything. So it did hold up pretty well. I did have to charge it a couple times, uh, twice, just to get the last bit of footage out that I needed for the video and for the test as well. So the first con I would say is just, it, it relates to design. So there's a back dial here, but this front dial, there's nowhere to be seen. I wish there was a front dial, um, but the front dial is actually this big old dial here, and that controls either your shutter speed, aperture, whatever you program it to. Um, that's just something really small, obviously. But the biggest thing, I think, is the fact that this doesn't have an artic articulating screen. I think that would have really separated itself from the SL2 and this being a much more video centric uh, camera. The specs are there, but I think the, in terms of the physical hardware, um, it being limited to this fixed screen uh, makes it not as portable as you would like because now you have to bring on a monitor to um, use. The battery door, this was... Guys, I almost I almost wrecked this camera because I couldn't figure out why this battery couldn't come out. And it's a little trick that I will gladly share with you. So once you pop this battery up, this is let's just do this right here. I'm looking at my screen. So once it pops, right, don't pull immediately because there's a little notch that it sits in. So you just press down again and it pops out. There's your battery. And I don't know if you can see that. That's a little notch that it hooks onto. Man, I was thrown for a loop for a while. I'm like, why isn't this battery? Did I get this battery stuck? Did I put this battery in wrong? I guess I should have just read the manual, but pop it, tap once, it's out. So there you go. And another con I would say is just that this rubber flap, I can see this being wearing down a little bit over time. So I wish it had like a harder door component where you can kind of um, individually choose like I just want my HDMI open it's a full HDMI by the way or the mics open um, instead of having all open at one time now they do separate it with the USB-C and the USB-C you can actually charge the camera with this but um, yeah I think that's really all I need to say so guys what do you think um, what do you think of the footage what do you think of the camera um, I think this is actually a really great option for something that you might be interested in. If you have, of course, the bank for a Leica camera, a Leica system, um, this is something that's very appealing. And um, I'm excited to see what else Leica will come out, maybe with an actual cinema camera. <laughs> All right, guys, take care and stay safe. i catch you guys on the next one. Bye. <laughs> you you want to say that again? <laughs> Creativity! <laughs>